this is a bad matchup. So again, it's really hard to deal with Landos, like I've talked about. Um, you think Leftovers Iron Defense Body Press could be good? Well, like, yes, but you don't get Trick Room with that. You don't get Ally Switch. You don't get the Bulldoze Self Proc. It's a completely different Bronze Song set if you want to do that. And then you just lose the Ghost Types. So it's like, yeah. This Dialga team's really good. It's a bad matchup for me because I can't deal with the Dialga. I don't have any moves that really deal with that. And then, like, again, talking about dealing with Lando. If I want to go for a Worm Wind on Lando, they switch in the Ninetales. If I want to go for an Electric Tech on the Ninetales, they switch in the Lando. And so they have Fake Outers, they have Moltres. This can be a really, really bad matchup. This can be a really, really bad matchup. I think I bring... Let's see if this goes too far. I bring... I think I just go Comfey Zek, and I'm like, I'm going to trust Policy proc and just pray the dog is in Policy. Because at this point, I think I'm 9-2. and two. Like, I'm 9-2, and two, guys. I've... I've paid my dues. I've already went to where I'm already extremely in the positives. I'm already extremely in the positives for the Players Cup Day 1. And all you really need to do is go positive. So let's see. Let's see what he does. I'm just going to I'm going to actually fish for him proccing my policy. Um and he could totally taunt me, but like I know he's tailwinding. I know he's tailwinding cuz like in most Zekrom teams, Zekroms are full speed. So you're like, cool, I'm just going to max my Dialga and I'm just going to one-shot this Zekrom because, or at the very least, get, get a Wormwind on it. So that's what I'm thinking he's doing, he, but he's also he's also a good player because he's going for a Steel Spike to make it so I do less with the, with the Zekrom. So Steel Spike's pretty good. Also, if I did like Ally Switch, he's still getting his defense boost. So like Tailwind, Steel Spike in this situation, like this person is making like 100% the safest, best play. It's just wrong against my team because we're so good at our team preview, right? He's not doing a misplay. Tailwind makes it so you outspeed the Zek so you can get your defense boost before I can do anything, right? But we're like that guy that just runs like, uh, we're just that guy that runs Sash Comfey. Right? We're just that guy. He crits us too, never lucky. And note that I didn't max my Zek, which is important. It's important. All right. So Trick Room. Oh, you tailwinded me, by the way. Do you remember when you tailwinded me? It was pretty good when you tailwinded me. You remember that? It was pretty good. So now I don't care. Do I switch my bronze on it? Or do I just policy proc? Yeah, I policy proc. Let's go. Yeah, nice defense boost. It'd be a shame if we were a special Zekrom. And then another thing is like, I'm also going to get a special D-boost. I'm thinking about this like this. I was like, all right, even if he is policy, if I get a special D-boost, he doesn't KO me. And then I have him pinned for the next two turns. I would say the Dialga is still like a bad matchup for this team. But uh, up until then, up until this point, this guy's still played very well. I don't want to reveal what his Mons in the back are, but I will say the only thing he could have done differently in this game was used his Mons in the back a little bit better, I think. I think he could use the Mons in the back a little bit better. And I also really like that I went for a uh, Draining Kiss there because it got me out of range in case he wanted to switch out uh, Torn for Ninetales to go for Hail. So it was for a Taunt. That's totally fine. I already got my move off. It's a little bit late for that taunt, isn't it? It's a little bit late. A little bit late for that taunt. And uh, big damage. And I'm like, cool, that does a lot. Right? But then unfortunately, we see uh, we see something. Something here. Look at this. Look at this. Something. So something. Something. Oof. Policy. <laughs> I did give myself a spadef boost on my Zek. But then I was really surprised... So I don't know what happened there. I said up until this point, he played really well. Uh, I think that Sash Comfey kind of tilted. I, I don't know what that was, but like maybe he wasn't trying to proc my policy. I don't know. Maybe he thought I was going to ally switch. He probably thought I was going to ally switch. That's probably exactly what that was and still wanted to make sure Comfey went down. That's probably exactly what that was. But I'm like, bro, we take those. Weakness policy, Dalga never heard of it. And if you remember that game that I had with that Zashi in a little while ago, then you know what this is. You know what's going to happen here. You know what's going to happen. You know what I'm about. And so I'm thinking, you have Lando. You have um, Rillaboom. I think you had a Ninetales back there. I gotta get this Dialga off the board. Gotta get the Dialga off the board. And I don't have to care about this Tornadus. Don't have to care about it. It's not a Pokemon that's ever going to be worth caring about. Because we go Encore that guy. He can use Taunt. I don't care about Taunt. I mean, I do really care. It sucks when I get Taunted. Because I can't like Max Guard or do other stuff. But like, we take those. And so I really think you should switch this Dialga out. I really think you should have switched the Dialga out. 
he could have protected it. He could have done so many different things. I think he should have switched out though. He had Lando. Lando is the counter. I've literally been using like Max Quake all day. So it's like, and then if you're like, well, what if you thought you were gonna Max Wormwind? What if you switch to Nine Tails? You know, I really think he should have done that. My personal opinion, because he could have saved that Dialga. Dialga would have still been a good Pokemon later on in the game because it's super uh, offensive on that set. It had a specialty boost too. Like, I guess he was trying to save his boost, but he should have switched it out. So here's the Ninetales. I'm like, bro, you should have switched out. You should have switched out your Nine Dialga, my opinion. But anyways, um, we still have a turn to Max. Yeah, I, I definitely think the turn one, like, Sash Comfey TR, like, tilted him super hard. Because he's like, if this is Sash Comfey TR, he probably has Ally Switch too. And I'm like, I don't have any of that on my Comfey. So yeah, at this point, I think we're just trying to make Sashes, get chip damage. Really enjoying this Esther commentary. I'm glad you like it. So he goes for the switch out. See, he knows that he's supposed to switch out there. You see what I mean? He's like, he's used Earth Power. He's probably going for an electric attack. Like, this guy knows how to play. He knows what's up. He's waiting out my trick room. He's going for another taunt. I don't know why he didn't switch out. He, if I were him, I would probably just protected the Ninetales, switched out for Dundee on that side. You know, this team's name is ZZ Top because it's Bronzong and Zekrom. ZZ all the way to the top. So yeah, he made a really good play. Uh, and like, I really wanted that terrain up so I could um, just do big damage. Yo, James, raiding with a party of 115. My guy, how was your Players' Cup day one? Holy moly, that's... That's a good, that's a, that's a lot of people. Thank you. That's more people than we already had. Holy moly, guys. Everyone say hi to James. Everyone say hi to James Beck. James Beck makes my, he's my favorite VGC content creator on YouTube. He makes the best stuff. And I think he's going to win the Players' Cup. Let's give a shout out to him. Where's that? Where's that? Bam. Shout out, guys. Go drop him a follow. So yeah, um, he made a really good play. Um, switching in Landers that turn. And he switches back out for Ninetales this turn. I think at this point, you're just taking too much damage by, like, Dazzling Legume and stuff like that. 12 and 3. James went James 12 and 3. Yo, that's awesome. That's awesome. Almost there. So at this point, we're just taking out the Thundee because he already had the land on the board, which means there's no potential of Thundee switching. This is the last turn he was Encored. I might as well just take that thing out. Rank 163, 12 and 3. Yo, that's amazing. I'm a little bit lower than that. But right now, what we're doing is we're reviewing my games. I recorded all of them, and we're just kind of casting over them, talking about stuff right now. I'm 9 and 2 with Special Zekrom. Feels amazing, right? Feels amazing using Special Zekrom. And uh, I'm running out of turns on my Trick Room, but uh, I still think I'm in a good spot. Like, Landers is a scary guy. Landers is a pretty scary guy. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we do here. Don't need any spoilers. At this point, I'm thinking about, like, I just got to get this Landers off the board. And we don't know anything about the Landorus set. We don't know anything about it. It could be choice, vested, whatever. Yo, have a good stream. Yo, thank you so much. Yeah, it's always good to get a little bit of a break every once in a while. I went to the Hyperbolic Time Chamber to train for this one, but uh, good to see you back. Thank you so much for the raid. I'll definitely try and hit you back with one uh, as soon as I can. Lando's everywhere. Lando's hard to fight for Zekrom. It's not, it's not my favorite matchup. I'll say that. But yeah, we get Eject buttoned out, which is totally fine. And I'm thinking, like, is this Mad Lad just EQing? Is he, like, actually just EQing right now? But I, I think he's Scarfed. I think it's a Scarf Lando, because I, I think the Trick Room was still up. Right? right? I didn't actually pay attention, but either way, you guys can tell what's going to happen. He's U-turning here, because I think I think he's locked into U-turn. Because um, he doesn't want he doesn't want to lock himself to Fly. He doesn't want to lock, because he knows I have Encore, uh, and he'll never be able to hit the Zekrom. And he doesn't want to lock himself to Earthquake, because uh, he'll be able to hit his Ninetales. And so it looks like he doesn't have Rock Slide, and so that means, like, Maybe he's not like locked into anything, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He U-turned me and that's completely fine. I don't care. I don't care about U-turn. And so at this point, I'm like, cool. I'm just going to let the hail do its work. It looks like he's just icy winding with the nine tails. Yo, what is up? Yeah, let the, let the hail do its work and just come with Entei and just go for, um, I think I just go for uh, extreme speed in the Lando. It's a two shot. And we just ignore the nine tails for the most part. But wowie zowie. Thank you so much for the raid, James. That's awesome. It's been a blast so far. I've actually had a pretty... I've had a lot of fun in this Players' Cup. I think I was like 6-0 and at the very start. And then I fought a couple bad matchups. But it looks like we're back on top. And we blocked that next Icy Wind. And I, I this is where I think like he's totally like some sort of choice on him. Just because like he's still using uh, Iron... Or what is it? U-Turn. But thank you so much for the follow as well. Appreciate it. Yeah, you went for the U-Turn on the Zek Lamau. So that, that puts Lando within range for E-Speed right there. And then uh, and then we just win. 
And then we just win. We're, we're climbing. We are climbing right now. Another follow, yo, T-M-O-S-K underscore. Thank you so much. Really do appreciate that. Yeah, we get to seal up the lander right there. This is the last turn of hail, so it wouldn't actually chip the lander. So we just want to make sure. He decides to go for the big scoop. And we have double digit victories right now. Double digit victories with Zek. The big Zek. Ah. And you can see this game. Ah. Let me right go right here. So what we're doing is we're pretty much pausing the team for even talking about him every single time. And so uh, we're going to be the Shadow Rider. This is the first Shadow Rider that I fought. And one cool thing about fighting this Shadow Rider team is they don't have an entity. Which actually completely changes how this team likes to go up against Entity Shadow Rider. Usually against Entity Shadow Rider, I'll self-policy proc my Zekrom. I'll try and one-shot the Entity with a uh, Max Lightning, which will then change the terrain. Which means this next turn, I can go for the Drain Kiss in the Entity and then one-shot the Shadow Rider. That's normally the flow chart that I like to follow when I'm dealing with uh, you know Entity Shadow Rider. This one's a little bit different. There's Toekiss. And we've already talked about how like Toekiss can make using Zekrom really hard. Um, just because if I ever want to go for a Dragon Attack, they can switch in Toekiss. If I ever want to go for an Earth Power, they switch in the Toekiss. Which they should never switch Toekiss in on Zekrom. But sometimes it do be like that. So yeah, Shadow Rider, it's good for us that they don't have like Entity as a Redirector. Because Toekisses aren't usually Sashed. And they don't have another Ground type. So if I do see the Toekiss ever just on the board, I can just go straight into the Max Lightning. Um, say Helping Hand Rex with Choice Specs? Maybe. I don't think he gets him what he needs. But yeah, we have Charizard, we have Wims, Zekrom, Kumfei, Bronzong, and Entei. Our team is super cool. I love this team. So glad you're doing really well. Yo, me too. I, I worked, I've been working really hard. I've been dropping probably three hours a day for the past couple weeks since they announced it. On, on building this team and like working on it, talking with people, uh, getting good practice partners and things like that. It's been really hard to not like talk about it, so... But yeah, we're going with uh, Bronzong. Sorry, we're going with Zekrom, Kumfei, Bronzong, Entei. I love Entei. It's such a good, like, anchor in this team. And uh, let's see. Let's see what happens here. Let's see it. So I know that they're going to lead Shadow Rider. We know this. We know they're going to lead Shadow Rider. Because, like, that's what that team does. That's what that team does. It leads Shadow Rider. And uh, let's, let's see what gets him. Let's see. Let's see how good the Shadow Rider is. So Shadow Rider and Cinderor, that's awesome. There's no ability for helping hands. You can go for Fake Out. But remember, if you guys actually remember, this guy had... I, I'm in like the 1600s right now. And I'm actually fighting someone that's in the 1400s right now, which is not great for me. But because he's in the 1400s, because he didn't even have the entity, his team looks a little bit, like, not great. It's like Dracovich, Titar looks a little bit antiquated. I wonder if he's actually up to date with how you should be fighting against Kumpe. I really think that the right play here, if you were him, the right player is definitely to, like, Parting Shot the Zek protect with the um shadow rider and then you come with your tokus and then you redirect me and i'm at minus one that's what you need to do that's like if you were good that's what you would do with this exact situation i don't think he's good i definitely think this man is going to fake out my come because that's just what's gonna happen obviously so i do know that right now this play is a little bit risky um but this is one of the things that, like, I think I'm really good at. Like, especially when I go to regionals. Like, I'm good at reading yeah, that's right. body language, the people that I'm playing against. And because this guy's low, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm sleeping on him. Because I just really don't think that he's going parting shot Zek protect. He's playing Shadow Rider. His whole team preview has led me to believe this guy only knows how to click offensive buttons. He has very, very limited uh, defensive options. Like, he had Togekiss, but, like, I don't think he's running, like, protect on, like, any of his mons. Because he's in the 1400s with a team that's super one-dimensional. So I'm going to see his one-dimensional. I told you he's going to fake out me right there. And we just eat the Astral Brawls like an absolute champion. And I'm thinking, all right, cool. Because he's playing that way, doesn't do any much damage, he's probably sashed. But if you remember correctly, like, I, I think he is sashed. We, we have what in the biz is called Draining Kiss, and it's pretty good. So we're in a really good spot here. We're in a really, really good spot here. And I, I think actually the next turn, I do go for the Max Lightning into the Incinera slot because it is a lot better than going for the Max Quake because they can switch in. You don't want to proc policies on anything, um, but like Cheetar would live the Max Quake, but it's actually more damage to go for Max Lightning uh, than like a super effective Max Quake against a lot of mons. So he goes for the Draining Kiss. Yeah, so like I said, um, this guy is just a little bit less experienced than a lot of the other people. And we definitely take those. And I think we take out the Incent here with Max Lightning. Max Quake would be nice, but again, we don't want to get switched in by, like, T-Tar, get a policy proc. We don't want to get switched in by Tokus, have our moves not do anything. We just want to go for the straight, stronger move. I think it's a 183 in terrain, so it's, like, a little bit stronger than even a super effective Earth Power. Because it's it's a 140 stab with a 1.3 from terrain. So it's, like, really, really strong. 
So there's the T-Tar that I was talking about and the Metagross. And I think this is where I think I make a really, really good play. At this point, I'm extremely ahead, but he hasn't maxed yet. And I've wasted two of my max turns. I only have one more max turn. Like I only have one more turn to pop off before things are going to start being not great. So I'm just, if, if you look at it, it looked like I targeted the Metagross. And I'm thinking, that's the policy. That's where the policy is. If I hit this Metagross, he's probably maxing it anyways. But if you remember what I had in the back, I have Entei and Bronzong. And Bronzong can body press a T-Tar, but that would be fucking policy if it was policy T-Tar. And yeah, I can Sacred Fire the Metagross, right? But if it's policy and he's maxing, and I don't get the burn, I'll lose. I'll totally lose. So what I decide to do is instead of playing to win, I play to not lose at this point. And I decide to go after the T-Tar slot instead. I decide to, I think I foil healing here, and I think I just go big into the T-Tar slot to set up for the fact that no matter what this Metagross thinks it can ever do, as long as I don't proc its policy, he cannot fight my Bronzong. That's not what... Metagrosses can't fight Bronzong. You need Shadow Riders and T-Tars for that, which is why we're respecting the T-Tar choice, getting that thing off the board and making way for Bronzong to come in and win the game. So they max the Metagross, which I would say is probably the better max choice because they don't know if we have Bronzong in the back. They looked at our team and they're like, you got Zard. T-Tar doesn't need to max to beat Zard. You got Entei. Cool. Proc my policy through Entei. He's not respecting our Bronzong. So we go for a full healing just to top ourselves off. Uh, it's possible we get to eat any max attacks. And also, we know that he's probably attacking with a max quake with the Metagross. So, like, we just want to get the T-Tar, like, off the board. We want to get this damage to stick on T-Tar. Um, and hopefully put it within range. So there's the quake. So this T-Tar is in Sandstorm and at plus one. Um, plus one specialty. But look how, look how well we eat that because we're not proccing their policy. It's so nice. Yo, Joe, thank you for the follow. So, yeah, um, take a lot of... A lot, of, a lot of good stuff there, but he has two more max turns left. So he goes for a high horsepower, he's doubling into Zekrom, and we're dummy thick, so we're just going to be able to eat it. Dummy thick Zekrom, that's what they call me. All right. So Zekrom's out of max turns, but there is a train on the board. So this is going to be Rising Voltage. Again, same base power um, when targeting grounded Pokemon. If the terrain is up, it's going to double in power to 140, uh, stab them plus the terrain, which is a 1.3. So it's oh, so much damage. Like the fact that you have a max Quake on the T-Tar... I, I still think this actually gets a KO. I was actually heavily thinking about Draining Kiss in the T-Tar, just in case. Because, like, if I didn't, I'd have to Extreme Speed it next turn, which would be really bad. But I think the Foil Healing gets me out of range for the, um... Actually, do I... Actually, I make a really good play here. I, do I switch out my Comfey for Bronzong, like an Absolute Champion, or do I just Foil Healing? I know that I switch out my Comfey either this turn or next turn. It looks like it's not this turn. Um, because I would need to save the Comfey to Foil Healing the Bronzong, if, if need be. But this should get me out of range of the, um... The Metagross move. Unless I lose my Comfy this turn. I don't really... Yeah, I do lose Comfy this turn, I think. Sorry. I'm sorry, guys. Comfy's gonna go down. I should have switched in Bronze Long Lamau. But T-Tar goes down because we're busted. T-Tar goes down. What's that uh, Fall Out Boy song? Like, Sugar, we're going down. That's that's where uh, that's where it's going. And then we don't die. Actually, yo, Comfy's not going down. T-Tar's going down. Comfy goes down eventually, I think, though. I think eventually I do lose it. I don't remember, though. I played 15 games today. Don't... Don't... <laughs> I can't, I can't remember every single turn perfectly. But Zekrom's still alive, and I'm thinking like, all right, there's two ways this goes down. Um, he's totally, he could max guard away at my bronze, my, my Zekrom, but like I could totally foil healing if I wanted to. Um, but the bronze on switching here is really, really nice. And even if I do lose my Zek to the Sandstorm here, I think just switching the bronze on and setting up for, for like Kumpei to win the game, Kumpei bronze on to win the game is just the smart play. So Rising Voltage, we'll get this damage. Oh my gosh, that's so big. That's so big. You don't want to proc the policy. You do not want to proc the policy. All right. So we eat a steel spike there, Lamau. And unfortunately, this is the, I think this is the last turn of Sandstorm. There might be like, actually, there should be one more after this that actually deals chip. But Zekrom goes down. It would have been funny if like, I just let the Comfey stay in and I got like multiple rising voltages off. But I still think we're fine. We, we've done so much damage. That's his last max turn. And he just, uh, he just can't do anything to this Bronzong. Like Bronzong just doesn't care. At this point, I think we just protect body press, foil healing, body press, bring in the Entei or something when the game. And I don't ever have to proc your policy. And so I think that T-Tar was actually vested to be able to eat that that well in the first place. I think T-Tar is like his probably team's answer to Shadow Rider, which is still pretty good. 
This is the only Shadow Rider team I, I fought in day one. So we're protecting here because he can't actually do anything to come here. I'm trying to see if he has like a, a Thunder Punch or like a Rock Attack or anything to deal with the uh, Bronzong. And it looks like he just straight doesn't. He's hoping we are not Levitate, which of course we are. So we go for a Body Press. Not going to do that much at all, but there's... He can't like hit us. He, he, what are you going to do? Iron Head? He's going to Iron Head my boy Bronzong? I thought about going for Foil Healing Ally Switch. I thought about it. You know how swag that would be? I really did think about it, but I was like, I don't need to. I don't need to swag on this man any more than I already am. Because I can get the heal and, like, avoid the iron head onto my Kumfei. But I feel like that's just, like, setting yourself up for, like, some sort of weird RNG Thunderbolt para never attack again. I'd rather just get my move, my healing move off. Come in with the Bronze Song. Full heal it. Goes for second EQ. And he was spamming EQ anyways. But, like, that still would have been funny. I could have totally done it. But it's the right play, I think, in that situation just to spam EQ because it covers the Entei switching in, which I also did think about doing. I also thought about switching in the Entei. So Body Press goes out. And you can see this is the last turn of Sandstorm, so Entei's not going to be able to take that Sandstorm damage. That's really, really good for me. And then the Entei. So now we're talking about proc and policies. I guess I'll proc your policy, I guess. Proc your life. I mean, I'm literally Entei right here. The big sacred fire. This guy's name is Ed, right? He's missing a couple letters. Mostly D and A. He goes for protect, but like, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna throw at this point. Is he hoping I set TR? Not today. Maybe he's like fishing for ally switch just to see if I have more moves. But the fact that he has protect there means like he, he probably has like a steel attack, which we've seen. Um, he has the ground attack, which we've seen protect and like maybe a zen headbutt but like you're not gonna zen headbutt my bronzong bro so uh we definitely be taking these so sacred fire makes the connections metagross goes down for the count and it's because of bronzong that we won that game bronzong busted i actually think that yeah like we definitely won that game on like a first turn when we outplay the shadow rider um but like we made really good plays respecting the correct max targets and like let's just talk about that like if we would have went back and dealt with like the titar in if we would have dealt with the metagross what if we what if we like rising bolt is metagross and he maxed the metagross and i didn't get any ko's and i lost my zekrom and then we had a full health titar and the metagross what if the titar was policy we never procced that either what if i had to go for a body press on and i proc the policy i lose the like crit crunches and that's all bad i think i made really really good targeting when i correctly dealt with the titar first with what i had on the board and then save bronzong once titar was gone to wall the metagross that's smart smart play we gotta update the win counter hopefully you guys are having a good time hopefully you guys are having a good time oh man i've been streaming for a while it's been like three hours already i played all these games and now i'm like casting all these games it's been a long stream all right 11 and 2 right so that means there's two more games left there's two more games left 300 IQ, that's right. So against this game, we're going to open up Zard. And the reason we're opening up Zard is because it's such a good matchup versus Aleki. Uh, it's good versus Indidi. It's great versus Sin. Um, and against Zygarde, I actually like Zard versus Zygarde personally, just because it enables my teammates to get the correct boosts. And like if they lead incorrectly if, and I lead like this, uh, I can go for like trick plays. So, uh, sorry, switch replays. So hope I'm hoping that they lead like Zygarde and Sin. Like that's what I'm hoping for personally. But they weed Indidi. They weed Indidi Zygarde. Indidi Zygarde, of course. Never lucky me, right? No switcheroo plays. Only sadness. Only sadness. But uh, let's see what happens here. Um, basically, I'm like, I can't do anything with this. And this is going to look really weird. But I actually think it's a really important thing to stick damage to Zygarde before they max. You may be like, that's a don't. You're proccing his policy. I think that's totally fine. I think it's totally fine. Darth, I appreciate all the effort you put in, my friend. And so, remember, our Sard is weak. Our Sard is weak. It, all of its damage comes from its dot. And the fact that it doesn't have any fire types on the board means I'm going to get getting double dot ticks. So, I'm going to max the Zard. I think it's the first time I max the Zard all day. And uh, we're just going to set a dot. So, we're really planning on Whimsicott to put in a lot of work here. And we don't know anything about that Zygarde set. Obviously, it's totally policy. He pairs it with Kumfei. They have redirection from the Unity. I'm thinking, because he has Unity, there's a chance that he doesn't bring Kumfei. Because I think it's really funny. Like, if I just would have went Kumfei, Zekrom, or even, like, Bronzong, Zekrom, I would have dumpstered this lead super hard. But, you know, that's... Sometimes it do be like that. And we're just going to go for the D-Gleam. 
And I don't really care about his policy. I, I don't I don't really care. I want to stick that damage. That's a lot of damage. It puts him within range for like next turn's D Gleam, you know? It's like really, really good if he it depends on how he plays it, you know? He hits the whims here, he's gonna clock out my policy. Um or just clock out my eject button. But you see what I mean? Like, if he didn't do that, he'd be within, he'd be within range of a uh, of damage. So if he went for like a coil, you know, like which is totally possible for Zygarde to do, he'd be within range of a, a second D we might just win the game. So I, I went for it. And then I come out with Dente, I'm like, oh, I'm pinned. I'm very pinned here. I don't like this. I don't like how pinned I am. And we're still going to get our Inferno. And I, you know what? I thought Inferno would do a little bit more than it does. Or not Inferno, uh, Wildfire. I thought Wildfire would do just, just a little bit, a little bit more than it does. But it's okay. Like that didn't do it. Like I thought the entity would be gone. I 1000% thought this entity would be gone. And, uh, it not being gone makes this very bad. Where do we live? We live in places that are hot. So power construct, that's completely fine. I don't I don't think it matters. Like he's gonna get it off eventually. Like he's he's gonna transform into digital champion eventually, right? There's nothing I can really do about that. And so I'm looking at this board here, and I'm like, alright, entity's gonna go down next turn, which sucks. What I can do here is remember, um, his Zygarde was faster than my Zard. So that means he's like a pretty fast guy over there so i want to get an airstream boost and it's not like you can kill my zard this turn so we'll get a policy proc on our zekrom all right we'll get a policy proc on our zekrom and then we'll give zekrom the speed that it needs because zard is actually a little bit faster than the zekrom and if he's outspeeding my zard he's also outspeeding my zekrom so by going for an airstream here we'll be able to take out the entity we'll be able to get a potential policy proc onto our zekrom and then also get a potential take of wildfire and if he actually if he doesn't even have come in the back then he's super dead um He's like super gone. If he brings out like something that isn't comfy here, right. we'd be taking those. So he goes for a follow me. Right choice. I think that's the right play. And he's definitely going after the Zekrom this turn. So he goes for the Quake. It's a, gets a Spadef boost. That kind of sucks. Not going to lie. Not going to lie. I was hoping for Warm Wind, but whatever. I can respect the Quake boost. It's stabbed. Anyways, uh, he gets his Quake boost. And uh, he procs my policy. My policy is now active. So even though Zekrom's not max, even if Zekrom was max, it would be using a 140 base move. So you can technically treat this Zekrom as a secondary maxmon right now. I have two maxmons staring this man down right now. And uh, we take out the entity. He takes a second little chip of the wildfire. And I'm actually thinking I win. This game's over. Um, we are, And also the Zygarde has shown itself to be like a full speed Zygarde um, just by how it's outspeeding these Pokemon that have a pretty high base speed. So I know that that Zygarde's fast, which means he's... And also, remember, he took over half from, like, my Whimsicott's Dazzling Gloom, which is, like, it took more damage than, like, an Urshifu takes. So I know he's, like, full speed. And so I'm like, cool, I just go Draco, um, I just go Airstream, and then the game's over, right? Just go Draco, Airstream, and the game's over, right? Right? That's just, It's just game. Like, I just got it. I just got it unlocked. It's easy peasy. Lemon squeeze. Get out of here, Zygarde. Because even if that Zygarde, even if it goes for like the full healing, like this is a plus two Zekrom. There's no terrain on the board. There's no like misty terrain. This would one shot him if he was like even at full. So the fact that like we have Zard also dealing probably like 5% more means we're probably okay. So yeah, he gets the, he gets the full healing. It's good heal. Airstream, it's, do, it's doing like nothing. It's doing like nothing. Like look at that. It's like, it's like 6%. And I'm like, that's fine. That's still within range. That's still within range. Draco Meteor and this man's career. 140 stab. Super effective. Of course, you know I miss it. Of course. Of course. It wouldn't be a player's cup without an RNG loss to uh, to a Miss Draco. So, <laughs> so at that point, uh, that's pretty much the game. But I would have won. Because uh, also, you got to remember, there's also still uh, the fire ticking. The, fire, the wildfire is still ticking, too. So that's why we, like, he was gone. He was straight Dunzoed. Straight Dunzoed. But, yeah, the Miss Draco. Um, sometimes it do be like that. Sometimes it do be like Miss Draco. At this point, the only thing I can even hope for is that he ends up, like, I, I hope he tunnels them into the Zard and then goes for, like, a Protect or something that we can Encore. So, like, the fact that we still have Encore means, um, like, we still technically have shots. And I'm not just gonna scoop. And I'm thinking like I can't even encore right now. I might as well just go for D Gleam. And so like we're just trying to crit D Gleam at this point. Like just get those big D Gleam crits. I'm yeah, thinking about 
going for switchers and i'm like no nah, i just gotta go for demon crits yeah thank you for the follow i appreciate it it does feel pretty bad man you should just i was like i was so frustrated when that happened i was like no no but you know i, I hit like four dracos already this tournament so and i hit a stone edge earlier so it's like i'm not i'm not upset so company's gonna protect i can encore that i definitely can they can miss oh yeah they definitely could have thrown here um like if the if the zygarde went for like any sort of not damaging move uh i could have or even like a dragon attack or something i could have encored it at like any time goes for the quake and uh remember zard's on the ground but we're not dead isn't that nuts isn't that like nuts how zard's just like just chilling right now love zard man but yeah, uh, we're trying our best. The fire is still taking a little bit, but like at this point, he's going to foil healing. Like my only shot, I think, is to like flinch. I think I can try for like a helping. There's two ways to do it. I can helping hand crit or I can flinch with air slash. And the flinch with air slash doesn't work because basically he just foil healings for more. So at this point, I'm just trying to go for the helping hand crit and hope that he like protects or does something weird so I can encore it. So I go for the helping hand with Charizard. Like I'm trying my absolute best. He's going to be able to go for his foil healing. I couldn't have encored through that. I could not have encored in that situation. And I'm like, cool. I mean, you're at plus two spadef, but like, maybe helping hand crit? M maybe? I mean, maybe? And I get, I think I get the crit, right? Isn't that the crit? Yeah, that is the crit. So like, if you didn't have the foil healing there, I did have enough damage. But uh, unfortunately, he also didn't click like a protect button or anything weird. So uh, I'm not going to be able to get the encore. And then that was a helping hand crit. So I tr I tried. I really, really did my best. But uh, almost. You can't tell me I didn't play to my outs. I could have just hit my Draco, I think. But still, I made it hard for this guy. I feel bad losing to Zygarde because I think it's probably, out of all of the like usable restricted mons, I do think Zygarde is the worst. I think that like I think that he could have done all the stuff this guy's doing with the Zygarde with a Garchomp. Um, but, you know, I'm, I'm playing to my outs right now. Again, I'm st I haven't shown Encore, right? So I'm like, if he ever just protects at all, I win. I, I still think I win. If you pop it, if you pop a protect and don't ever kill my whims, I win. But he's probably, I think he just goes D-Gleam this turn. How did my computer just turn off? Well, no. That was weird. The computer didn't turn off, but the screen went black for like a second. Anyways, uh, yeah, he just goes for a second full heal, which is the right play because it keeps him out of the range of the crit D-Gleams. And, uh... Yeah, never lucky. Never lucky once again. I think he doesn't even... I don't think KO's Entei because Entei's freaking the thickest thing in the freaking world right now. We'll talk about what my name means in a little bit. Basically, it's a card game term, so it's, it's all about keeping advantage. Keeping a plus one advantage. And then I don't think we get the burn of the comfy either, so... Never ever lucky, right? Never lucky, that's a plus one. And we go to 11 and 3. Which I still think is a pretty respectable first day and then there's one more game never look yeah we could have set the draco that draco to win the game so yeah last game lunala for the last game when was the last time anyone ever used a lunala the answer is never and i'm like is that policy you know zekrom has terravolt um but terravolt if you guys can correct me if i'm wrong it doesn't break shadow shield Terravolt does not break Shadow Shield. It breaks things like uh, like multi-scale. But um, as far as I know, it doesn't break Shadow Shield. So it's going to be really hard to um, to beat a Lunala team. So I'm bringing the, the standard Kumfei Zekrom. And I'm thinking about it, like, Azumarill could be a really problem. And I don't know if I want to bring, like, I think I bring the Whims just in case I have to Encore the Azumarill. Or maybe I don't. I thought about it. I really did. Do I bring, do I bring Zard here? Wow, I'm a champion. Zard's greedy here. Zard's greedy here. I think I bring Zard because it's uh, such a match good matchup for Selecki. Uh, it can bait the Azumarill, and um, it's a good matchup for Cinderace. So we go against the last game. We're 11 and 3 right now. It'd be really nice to go 12 and 3. It would suck to go 11 and 4 after winning, after going like 6 0, right? So let's see it. Survey says. Aleki and Lunala. He's ready to pin my Zard so hard with this board. Holy moly. What a board that pins Zard. Jody, I want you to shine at you. Thank you for stopping by. So at this point, like I'm thinking how I should be playing this. I think I'm actually just going to go for the uh, policy proc. 
I'm thinking, I, I kind of want to just trick room. I really want to just trick room, but I also want to like wait and see what he does. So we're maxing here just so we don't die. Just because it can be a lot of damage. And the reason why we're um, still like going all in on this Aleki, because we can super pin the Aleki with, uh, like, so basically this is like Sash Aleki. We can KO with Draining Kiss. And uh, we're maxing here because we don't want to take like big damage if they are maxing and hitting our Zekrom. And we want to get that Spadef boost. If we get the Spadef boost, there's no way that Swinala ever catches us. Ever. And there's nothing, like, you should not be bringing Red Aleki to this matchup. I know Zard's big bait, but you should not be bringing it. And so right now what I'm noticing is he didn't max the Lunala. And I'm like, how ballsy do you have to be to not max the Lunala? Because if you have to max, you have to max these things. And so I'm thinking like, oh, it's power herb. Um, so it has to be power, which is why he brought it versus Zard. He had the ability to go for like um, Electro Webs against Zard if he wanted to. He goes for just a big Thunderbolt there, a big Meteor Beam. Told you, told you it's Meteor Beam. So it's power herb, Meteor Beam. Uh, he gets a special attack proc and then like next turn they max. That's usually how it would go, I would think. But I'm still in a good spot. And I, I think the Alecky did, um, the, the Alecky is going to live the, uh, the Quake. So there's the Meteor Beam, Comfey. Almost, buddy. Almost, Comfey. And so watch this Savage outplay we do next turn. Watch it. Watch it. It's going to be Savage. It's going to be so good. Because remember, like I said, uh, Terrible doesn't break the Shadow Shield. But I have a Pokemon that does break the Shadow Shield. I, I in fact, do have a Pokemon. Now I'm thinking to myself, they're probably going to max this Lunala. Like, I would max this Lunala this turn, because you're still at full. You got a plus one. Should definitely max the Lunala. Like, definitely max the Lunala. The only reason you wouldn't max Lunala is if your teammate would be pinned, right? So, I really think what they're doing here is they're trying to get rid of the thing that pins the teammate. And they can't they can't max Lunala and Rockfall my Entei, because the Aleki would die. So, that's why they're not maxing. That's 100% the reason they're not maxing here. Because the Aleki would die. Because they're going to try to protect bait me here. So at this point, you're like, screw this Ledger Leki. I don't even care. I have Zekrom. You ignore the Reggie Leki. But also, you're not really technically ignoring it. Watch, he's going to go for the Protect. Yeah. Yeah. Nice Protect, buddy. And the Lunala is fast too. So like, Lunala can totally go for its move. But he can't go for a Rock Fall because the Leki would die. So it goes for a Moon Guys Beam. I actually don't even think Rockfall would have taken out this Entail. Look at this. Look how well we ate that. And then the Snarl comes in from downtown. Breaks the Shadow Shield. Four times super effective. We absolutely love to see that. And because you didn't max, you remember there's still a plus two Zekrom slamming in max moves. Lunala goes down for the count. And remember, you're lucky for Texan to be off cooldown. We have access to extreme speed. I'm on an inner focus Entei. Like, it's a pretty good spot to be in if you're me. It's a pretty good spot to be in if you're me, I think. So let's see. What do they bring out? What you gonna do? Cinderace, like I care. Cinderace is a good Pokemon. And they haven't maxed yet. I only have one more max turn. If they make the, if they like max guard their Cinderace, they could potentially be in for a good spot here. But we know we have to deal with the Leki. We know we have to. And right here, I was kind of like wishing that I did bring the Whimsicott because I was like, ah, I can get the Cinderace off the board. The Pokemon that's freaking me out is Azumarill because Azumarill can totally deal with Zekrom if played correctly. Maybe it's like Walking Berry or like Azumarill can deal with Zekrom. But Azumarill can't really deal with like Whimsicott because eventually he's going to go for Protect, like an Aqua Jet or even like Player Up. And then you just Encore him into Player Up and send out like your Entei or you just play differently. But you know what I mean. I'm wishing that I didn't have Zard. <laughs> I'm wishing I didn't have Zard, but it's okay. He's going for the Max Cinderace. Yeah, that's right. And I'm thinking to myself, even if he has a Zumro in the back, like, I'm Zekrom, and I would outspeed the crap out of that Zumro because I'm killing the Cinderace. It's gone. Uh, e Speed's going to be able to take that guy up. He probably thought if I had E Speed, I would have used it last turn, which is why he stayed in this turn. He's probably going for an Electro of this turn to go for a minus two speed because he's going for a Max Strike. And I betcha that's boosted off of a Giga Impact because it does a shit ton of damage. Like a lot of damage. My full HP defense Entei takes the L to it. And uh, if he had a minus two on my Zek, I think he would have actually been in a situation where like a Zoomerill could have outsped. But we take this out, Lightning. Big Max Lightning, boosted by the Terrain and Stab. Cinderace gets one-shotted. 
And I'm thinking to myself, like, oh man, if this is a Zubaril, I'm sad. I'm big sad. Because all I have is a Charizard. <laughs> And so, it's basically going to come out of me trying to flinch the Azumarill with Air Slash. So, trying to flinch and hoping that it's not like a full speed Scarf Azumarill or something. Where like a full speed Azumarill might be able to actually outspeed my Zekrom. Because remember, we're made for Trick Room. We're not made to be fast. And I think he knows it. So, we go for the Air Slash. Yo, Pika Train, ready with the party in nine. How was your stream, my friend? And then, does he outspeed? We get our Air Slash off. We back. That's right. Bam. Air Slash. We don't get the flinch, but we don't need it. And who knows? We actually might have got the flinch. We, the world may never know. We take those wins. A zoom roll down for the count. Rising voltage busted. Busted, busted. And uh, guess what? That means we won. And you know what that means? That means that we won. Give me a sec. That means we update the win-loss counter to 12 and 3. Like this.